Hello, my name is Salome, and in this video I am going to introduce you the microinjection technique in the zebrafish model and its use to study diseases. Zebrafish embryos and larvae are increasingly being used to model human diseases. Using zebrafish, we aim to better understand disease mechanisms and develop new treatment strategies. In many diseases, such as cancer and infection diseases, the immune system plays an important role. We can use the zebrafish as a model organism to study these immune-related diseases because functional immune cells like macrophages and neutrophils are present since the first days of development. In this field of research, there are many genetic tools available and the model is very suitable for drug screening. Embryos and larvae are optically transparent, which makes the zebrafish model perfect for live imaging of disease processes. Microinjection is an important technique to establish disease models in zebrafish. It can be used, for example, to inject human cancer cells into the zebrafish embryo and study how these cells grow and spread through the tissues. In our research, we use this technique to study host pathogen interactions during infectious diseases. I am going to show you two microinjection techniques that we use for this type of research. To start, we need to prepare in advance 1% agarose injecting plates, borosilicate glass microcapillary injection needles using a micropipette puller device, the injection sample, hair tool to manipulate the fish, and of course, the fish in the required developmental stage. The first microinjection method that we will demonstrate is injection into the blood circulation. We perform this using two days old embryos. The site of injection is the common cardinal vein, also known as duct of Cuvier. This is a vein that returns blood to the heart and from here the injected sample can be delivered over the whole body through the blood flux. We first load the sample into the needle using a microloader tip. Next, we mount the needle into a micromanipulator and position it under a stereo microscope. We then cut the sealed tip of the needle using tweezers and adjust the parameters of the microinjector to achieve the desired injection volume. These parameters are time, compensation pressure, and injection pressure. We now prepare the embryos for the experiment. We anesthetize them with triacane for approximately 10 minutes prior to the injections as described previously in lateral injections video. A group of 10 embryos is transferred to a 1% flat agarose injecting plate or a lateral mounting plate. Excess of egg water is removed to avoid the displacement of the embryo during the injection. To facilitate the process, we use the hair tool to line up the embryos with the hair oriented to the left. Finally, we are ready to proceed with the injection. We adjust the position of the micromanipulator at a 45 degree angle between the needle and the agarose plate. In this way, the site of injection is approached from above. An easy way to confirm if the injection was performed correctly is to check for the immediate expansion of the duct of Cuvier after the pulse. Also, there should be no change in the yolk structure. In our laboratory, we use this injection to model cancer. Here, you can see a representative result of confocal imaging at that one hour post-injection. In green fluorescent color, we can see blood vessels, and in red, skin melanoma cancer cells. At one day post-injection, we can see how the cancer cells are distributed through the dorsal and caudal aorta. In my project, we use the same technique or a similar microinjection method to inject bacterial pathogens into the blood circulation. We infect the embryos with bacteria that resemble the human pathogen that cause tuberculosis. After a few days, the infected larvae develop clusters of bacteria in infection, which are early stages of tuberculosis granulomas, which is typical for disinfection disease. After injection into the blood circulation, as I just showed, the injected cells or bacteria spread through the body. However, for some research question, it is useful to inject locally in a specific tissue. As example of a local microinjection technique, I will describe tail fin injection into three days old larvae. 
the tail fin consists of a few cell layers. This thin tissue enables high resolution imaging of biological processes at a cellular and intracellular level and in real time. The protocol for microinjection is the same as before, except for two things. First, when cutting the needle tip, we do it in an angle to obtain a sharper tip. Second, we adjust the position of the micromanipulator to a smaller angle between the needle and the agarose plate, between 30 and 45 degrees. In this way, the site of injection is approached from above and reducing the probability of piercing through the thin tail tissue. You can tell if the injection was correct if an ellipsoid blister immediately appears after the pulse was given. In our laboratory, we use this injection to model tuberculosis disease. Here, you can see a representative result of confocal imaging. After a few hours, we can see bacteria that are engulfed by immune cells. We can zoom in even farther into the cells and observe how the bacteria reside inside vesicles that might direct them towards degradation. I have shown you two methods of microinjection. If you want to learn more about microinjection methods, check out our video article, Infections of Zebrafish Embryos with Intracellular Bacterial Pathogens on job.com.